You know, God is saying, if God be for us, who can be against us? What does this all mean about the love of God? I mean, and he says, what does that mean? He says, if God be for us, who can be against us? That's what he's saying. If God is determined to stand with us, do you know that God has determined to stand with you? He has determined. It's like he has written that I will stand with you no matter what. Think about that. No matter where you have made a mistake, he says, I will stand with you. And he says, all men who could ever stand against us. No man can stand against us, was not. This is the beauty of us being Christians. That's, that's, that's the beauty of being born again. No man can stand against you. It doesn't matter how powerful it is. He says, who can separate us from the endless love of Jesus Christ? Absolutely no one. Then he tells you, listen to this one. For nothing in the universe has a power to diminish his love towards us. Nothing in the universe. And then he asks you, shall trouble, uh -huh. shall pressure, shall problems. He says, problems, they are unable to come between us and heavenly love. Ah. You see, never allow problems to come between you and God. I want to talk to you about the new creation men. As a Christian, you need to understand. You see, I am taking the church to where they are. And bit by bit, bit by bit, bit by bit, you're getting to know who you are as a child of God until the full stature of Christ is formed in you. And that's why I'm preaching this kind of messages to you. And this kind of message that I'm bringing to you, they are Bible. Paul says, I preach nothing, but I preach the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And that's what I'm determined to do, not to preach myself, but to preach one person, Jesus Christ. When you understand Jesus, and when you understand the born again, the born again uh, Christian, when you understand that, you will move from being a child to revelation. Now, he is revealed in you. Then you move from revelation to visitation. It starts visiting you. Then as you grow, then you go to habitation where God inhabits wherever you are. Tangible. I'm not talking about just because now God stays, with you, he stays in you, but tangible. Remember, our access to God is not based on our position or our titles, that I'm a pastor. There are many pastors on diapers. There are many leaders on diapers. And, and there are many mature believers on the pews. So our access to God is based on our relationship with God. So if you can have a a relationship with God more than I can. That means you have an access to God in an easy way because you are always there with God. That's why Jesus said to his disciples, I no longer call you servants, but I call you friends because I tell you things that nobody I mean, understands because you're always with me. You always sit at my feet. That's why when you look at the story of Martha and Mary, they were both believers. But Mary sat at the feet of Jesus. And Jesus said to Mary, and Martha was complaining, why are you, are you uh, Jesus, are you not telling Mary to come and help me? Jesus didn't say, Martha is wrong by doing what he's doing. But I mean, what she's doing. But Jesus says, Mary has chosen the best. Not that Martha was not doing the right thing, 
But because Mary was going to save Jesus correctly, because she was going to understand what Jesus wants. Many of us are serving the Lord without knowing what the Lord wants. What the Lord wants from us. And that will stem from a relationship. For example, if husbands and wife have a proper relationship, my wife will know that this thing I don't like, this thing I like, without me having to say anything. And I will know what she doesn't like, want, what she doesn't want, based on relationship. It's not based on position, it's based on relationship. It's not based on mer marital status because others are married, but they don't know each other. So you see the difference, Pastor Mam. So our access to God is based on relationship. So the more we know him, the more he reveals himself to us. The more we understand who we are, the more we walk in power, the more we walk in, in authority. That, hence, I'm, that's, that's why I'm, I'm bringing these messages to you because you must understand where I want to take you, where you, where you must go. That's why I, I, I have you to read the Bible so that you can understand where you must go. What is your position? Because Paul wrote something very important in the book of Galatians, chapter number four. He says, an heir, that means an, a person who has to inherit something, an heir, as long as he is or she is a child, he differs not from, from a servant. He says, though he be a lord of all, Though he owns everything, though she owns everything, she differs not from being a servant because by virtue of being a child, she doesn't have access to the inheritance. And that's what is happening to the body of Christ today. The body of Christ today, many of them are children. They don't have access to the inheritance based on them being children because they don't know what is written in the will. The will has written so many things. One of the things that are written on the will is found in 2nd in, in second Corinthians chapter number 5, verse 17. Now, if anyone is enfolded into Christ, he has become an entirely, an entirely new creation. All that is related to the old order has vanished. Your version will say, if any man be in Christ, he is, not he shall be, he is, he is a new creation. All the things have passed away. Now, how many of us are relating to each other based on our past? When you look at a person, you see the past. But that's not how God looks at us. That's why the Bible says, David, a man after my own heart. Because the Bible says, God does not look at the outward appearance. He looks at the heart. That's why, they, that's why it is so important to fill, the, to fill your heart with the word of God. To fill your spirit with the word of God. Because when you feel the spirit, your spirit, the word of God, sooner or later, your whole emotions will be governed by the word of God. Am I talking to someone? Now, listen to this. This is what Jesus Christ says. John 14. Let's go to John 14. I want to show you something. Let's, let's read. Don't worry or surrender to your fear. That's exactly what is happening today. People are surrendering to their fear in a powerful way. You see, fear is a deadly disease. Eh? It's an enemy. That's why you must cure your fears by faith. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Am I talking to someone here? Am I talking to someone? So Jesus is telling us, listen, don't yield to your fear. So people were afraid now because Jesus Christ was going. You see, he was telling them that I'm going. So they were filled with fear. Then listen to what Jesus Christ says. For you have believed in God, now trust and believe me also. Just believe, him, believe, me in, believe in me also. Then he says, it's a very, very important aspect of this message. 
in my father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were otherwise, I will tell you plainly because I go to prepare a place for you to rest. <laughs> Did you hear what Jesus Christ said? I mean, this is... This is he says, I, prepare, I go and prepare a place for you to rest. He doesn't say, I go and prepare a place for you to stay. That's, that's, that's so important. That's so important. Because Jesus says, come unto me, all of you, those who are weary and laden, for I, Jesus, will give you rest. That's why the Jews never understood Jesus when he was working on the Sabbath. They said, they said, you are busy working on the Sabbath. He says, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. Sabbath was created for men, not for me. He says, I am the Sabbath. I am rest. He says, Jesus, this is Jesus. Now, listen to this verse. He says, I've got to prepare a place for you to rest. That is the word rest. To rest. To rest. Then he continues. And when everything is ready, this is Jesus. When everything is ready, I will come back to take you to myself so that you will be where I am. And you already know the way to the place where I'm going. This is so important. Hmm? Just, uh, I'm going to prepare a place. You know, when you read this chapter with the physical eyes, you will think that Jesus is talking about a physical place or physical house. And he's not talking about a physical house because he first tells you that, listen to me, in my father's house, there are many houses. If there were no houses, I will tell you. But I am going to do what? To prepare a place for you so that where I am, you will be also. He doesn't say where, where you will go to stay. He says, where I am, you will be also. That is a place in me. It says, come by me, a place by me. And then they, they ask her, how do, how, how do we go there? Listen to this answer. How do we go there? He says, he tells them first, you, you, you know the way. They say, ah, but we don't know the way. They say, it's, it's, it's Philip says, we don't know the way. I mean, Thomas, he says, master, we don't know where you are going and we don't know the way there. Then he says something very important. Say, Thomas, Thomas, I am. I am the way. Thomas, Thomas, I am the way. I am the way. Jesus is saying, I am the way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father. Now you see that place he's talking about. No one comes. Now he's explaining, he says, no one comes to the Father except by me. It doesn't say no one comes to the place or the houses that I've prepared in heaven. It doesn't, say, I, 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 it doesn't say, come to the places that I've prepared in heaven. No, 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 no. He says, Philip says, how do you know where you're going? He says, I'm the way. No one comes to the Father. It doesn't say, no one goes to heaven. There's a big difference there. No one goes to heaven except by me, Jesus. Is Jesus telling them this, this thing? He says, I'm the way. I am the way, Jesus says. I am the way. He says, no one comes to the Father except by me. Now, they, you, you, you know nowadays people are, are finding some, some sort of spirituality of some sort. They will tell that there's many ways to God. Jesus says there's one way. I am the way. There is no other way. Here another prayer says there are many ways to God. He's lying. Then he doesn't know the Bible. He hasn't read John 14, I'm telling you that Jesus is the way. So if you don't know Jesus Christ as a, as a personal savior, receive him. That's why even the Jews themselves, when Jesus Christ came, when if you read the story of Nicodemus, Nicodemus, Nicodemus came to Jesus. He said something in, in John chapter number three. He said, master, we all know. That means even the, the, the critics of Jesus, those who criticized Jesus, they knew who Jesus was. He says, we all know. Then he asked him a question, a question. How can I have eternal life? And Jesus said, you must be born from above. 
That's what he said. Then Nicodemus says, how can I be born if I'm, if I'm, how, if, if I'm already born? How can I be born from above because I'm already born? He says, you must be born in water and in spirit. Now, Paul explains that. That getting born again experience is to be born of the word of God when you receive Jesus Christ who is the way. When you receive him as your personal savior. And then Paul explains the first scripture that I read to you. What does that mean? That's what I'm explaining to you. He says that means that if any man be in Christ. Now Christ, Christ is a place. As Christ is a person, he is a place. As Christ is a person, he is a place. So that's why it says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Behold, all things have passed away. The new has come. That means God wipes that record. He forgets everything about you. The Bible says he throws those things into the sea of forgetfulness. So, so what Satan does with believers, now what it does, because you are in Christ, he tries to take you out by bringing your past by bringing your past. He tries to take you away from him by, 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 by going out. That's why the apostle Paul says in, in 2 Corinthians chapter number 10, you ought to capture your thoughts, cast out those imaginations, even as your obedience is fulfilled. So, in other words, these are spirits that are rebellious. They take you out through thoughts, they want they want to watch things that are, that are taking you back to where God has taken you so that you come out of this thing. For Colossians 3, verse 3 says, the Bible says, our lives are hidden with Christ in God. We are already there now. When you are born again, you are in Christ with God. You are there. That's why it says, I go to prepare a place for you where my father is. That's why it says, that's why it says my life is hidden with Christ in God. So you are there because you have the way. Jesus is the way to take you there. Then you are hidden. So Satan, because you are here on earth physically or spiritually you are there. That's why a Christian doesn't pray to heaven. I want to repeat this thing. A Christian doesn't pray to heaven. He prays from heaven because he is seated together with Christ there. Do you understand what I'm saying? He says, you are not of this world, even though you are in the world, but you are not of this world, you are there. That's why it says your citizenship is in heaven. It's like you, you have come here with a passport. You are here on earth, you are an ambassador. You are coming with a passport and say, okay, now I'm here, but I'm staying there because now I have to complete an assignment. So Satan, because you live in two separate worlds, at the same time. See, that's what, that's what confuses us as believers. We live in two separate worlds at the same time. Two separate worlds at the same time. Because we live in two separate, separate worlds, it's difficult for us to understand the spiritual world, which is more real than the physical. It's more real than the physical. So that's why he says, listen, for you to understand the spiritual world, what is important for you to do is to, is to study the manual which is the Bible, then it will help you to understand what you have, who you are, what is the meaning of the new creation. Do you get what I'm trying to tell you, church? So I'm telling you a Christian, this is a real life of a Christian. You see, the problem with Barcelona, they think that Jesus Christ died for their sins and it ended there. Listen to me. Jesus did not die for a Christian. He died for those who are not Christians. So they can have access. Then when you are in Christ, that thing that he did is no longer there because, listen to this, listen to this. Listen. The Bible says, Jesus is the firstborn from creation. See what I'm saying? Firstborn from the dead. The day he rose up, that's where Christianity begins. When he rose up. So now you are dead. When you are a man, you are dead. You are, you are, you are, you are a dead cop because of Adam. You are dead. Then the day you received Jesus Christ, you became alive in God. 
You became a new creation in God. So your life is in God. Now, for you to understand where you are, so Satan, because he knows that you are not, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are there now, he, he wants to bring you back to this level, to a lower level. That's why the Bible says creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. See, you see, that's why it says the sons of God are those who are led by the Spirit. So the, 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 the challenge for a believer is to walk in the Spirit. That's a challenge. Because listen to this. Listen to this. This, 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 this is shocking. Listen. Listen to the Bible. Listen, listen, look at what the Bible says. It says, the sons of God, Romans 8, 14, the sons of God are led by the Spirit, not by the prophets. It's, do, you, do, you, do you know how, how, how sinful it is for a child of God to go and consult a prophet? It's a sin. I discovered that thing late in life. It's a sin. Do you know why it's a sin? Do you know what is a sin? why it's a sin? It is a sin because God has given each and every one of you the Holy Spirit. And then you decide to leave the Holy Spirit that is inside you because you are lazy. Because you are lazy. You go and ask another person what God is saying on your behalf. Yes. So, because a lot of people are lazy, the church is lazy to seek God. Remember what I said to you earlier. I said it begins from being born again. Then you go to revelation. God reveals himself. Then from revelation, it's visitation. It starts to visit you. From visitation, it goes to habitation. Let me shock you again. This one will shock you. You know Psalm 91 is not for everyone. Not, when I mean everyone, I mean Christians. I don't mean those. Those who are not born again cannot even access Psalm 91 at all. But I'm talking to Christian. It's not for Christ, It's not for every Christian. I'm shocking. And then and people don't want to hear that. They say, Pastor, but this is the problem. It's the truth. Listen to this. The first verse of Psalm 91. It says, "He who dwells in the secret place." of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Not he who visits. Habitation. Habitation. There's no habitation in the church. People, you see, God is, God, God does not habit the people. You look at King Solomon. If you study King Solomon, he was a Pakistan king. He, he died a Pakistan king. But in his early days, in his early days, what, what caused Solomon to backslide was that he married too many women. God told him that, uh, please, in the book of Deuteronomy 17, 17, he said, kings, number one, they must not multiply horses. They must not multiply women. He it, it said it. Do you know even David failed in that area? You see, what God condones doesn't mean he agrees with it. He just leaves it. Okay, let me explain something. If you study the Bible in Romans 12, 12 too, it starts from 